Welcome to Success in Life with Robert Tilton, home of whole person prosperity, dedicated to your spiritual, physical, and financial well-being. How to have more life for living, a better life. See your dreams and desires of your heart come true. Learn how to live the rich, full, and abundant life in Christ, that your days may be as the days of heaven on earth today and forever. And now live and rebroadcast across America and around the world is author, entrepreneur, pastor, and modern day prophet of success and divine prosperity with the new Success in Life television network is Robert Tilton. A big shout out to all of my special, special friends. And uh, we're interrupting our regular program to bring you some special announcements. Uh, I'm just inspired to take a moment to thank all of you for your continued support today. Uh, I've been living by faith since 1969, went into the ministry in 1974, didn't really have any place to preach. No one had called me to preach, but I had a revelation that man did not call me. God called me to preach. And what he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel of the kingdom. And the Lord would work with me with signs following. And we've seen so many uh, thousands of remarkable miracles, proof, evidence that Jesus Christ is alive, that he was raised from the dead after three days in the tomb in hell. And he confirms the word that we preach with manifestations of his power. The woman with the issue of blood had suffered much. You know the story, how she wrote her own ticket with God. She had heard of Jesus. She must have heard that she could be healed. She saw herself touching the hem of his garment. She said, when I touch the hem of his garment, I will be whole. She spoke what she believed she saw herself doing. And of course, you know, the rest is history. She acted on her faith. She touched the hem of his garment, though multitudes were pressing in all around Jesus. She touched him with her faith. Your faith touches God. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. He that comes to the Lord must believe that he is believing with your heart, not with your head must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. When we begin to seek the things of God, instead of our natural mind reasoning, that begins to release and give substance to things hoped for. I've been reviewing a lot of our testimonials over the years. I've had just a marvelous time the last few days going through these testimonials of years and years of ministry, uh, testimonials of people who have received healings, you know, through our field producers that we had four or five field producers with an audio man and field producer that went all over the United States. And we captured testimonials of regular people. Uh, the part that's standing out to me the most is regular people facing problems. Maybe you're facing a problem right now and uh, you can face the problem in the natural with natural faith. I believe it when I see it, there's natural faith, but then there is Bible faith. Bible faith is faith from the heart. Whether I see it or not, I believe that I have received it. That's a supernatural kind of faith. That's a faith that moves, moves you out of impossible limitations of our natural reasoning and thinking and seeing and feeling and moves us into supernatural God kind of faith. And when we move into the God kind of faith, we get the God kind of results. Amen. I said, when we move, we're talking about the prayer of a, a, a prayer of faith. We're talking about operating and using what's in the name of Jesus. We're talking about moving out of our natural human, natural reasoning, natural limitations, and in using our faith to believe what we can receive from God 
and what we can receive our prayers answered. Uh, these testimonials are remarkable testimonials. What, what I've seen, like Abraham, Abraham uh, paid no attention. Uh, God promised Abraham a child in his old age, in Sarah. And uh, Abraham uh, did not look at how things looked in the natural. He, he, believed, he believed that God calls things which be not as though they were. Woo! God calls things which be not as though they were. Abraham considered not his own body. He didn't, he didn't consider how things looked, how he felt. He, he realized that, that God calls things which be not as though they were. And we having, oh, Shabbat Shatta, and we having the same spirit of faith, same kind of faith. We have the measure of the same faith out of a measure of his faith that we believe that we call things which be not as though they were. You can call things which be not as though they were. Uh, <clears throat> I was going over some things in my mind uh, yesterday and this morning and uh, considering some some financial issues that we're facing. And we're always facing, you know, every, it seems like every day there's bills to pay. And uh, while we look not at the things that are seen in Corinthians, but we're, we're looking not to the things that are seen. This is what I heard. We're looking not at the things that are seen as our source. While we look not at the seen realm as our source. I'm going to say that again for you, sister. While we are not looking at the things, while we look not at the things that are seen as our source, but to God, the things that are not seen. We're, look, we're looking to the Lord, to, to what he promised, to his, his, his words, what he said. And uh, we understand the things that are seen were not made by things that do appear. Now, faith is the substance of things. Faith is a substance of things not seen. It's a substance. And when we believe what God said, like the woman with the issue of blood, she acted on what she had heard. She had heard of Jesus. She acted on what she had heard of Jesus. She acted on that word, and she must have believed it in her heart because she said it with her mouth, and then not only did she believe it in her heart, what she had heard, faith had come by hearing the word. She had Bible faith. She had miracle working faith. We know that. She had, we could say she had faith to get what she, she had faith to get her prayers answered. You have the, the kind of faith to get your prayers answered. These testimonials, this is just, I have thousands of testimonials that we have captured. These testimonials right here uh, were pe ordinary people who simply believed the word that I preached and taught on our television program, like I am right now. And they did something with what they had heard. Oh, that's good. They did something with what they had heard. Faith had come, and they did something with their faith. They put their faith to work. Can you say amen? They put their faith to, I'm going to show you a testimony just a moment. They put their faith to work. They needed a miracle. Remember the woman in 1 Kings 17? She needed a miracle. She, in the natural, was making her last meal for her and her son. They were going to eat it and die. But the prophet was sent to her to preach to her. And he said, thus saith, the, he said, thus saith the Lord. And the Lord began to speak the word to that woman through uh, the Lord's servant, Elijah. He preached the word. He preached, he preached faith to her, and she acted on what she had 
heard. She was a doer of the word and not a hearer only. She showed the Lord her faith by her works, and that released the miraculous. That released the supernatural power. That released divine supply with its divine healing, working of miracles to get us out of tough, weird situations or get answers to prayers. Glory to God. So, so what's happening is there's a these people. I was one one particular brother. He, he his whole life was in shambles. They had no money. They bills. They had lost their car. They had turned their car in. They didn't know what to do. They didn't have any money. But the wife started watching me on television. These everybody say God bless the wives. These these women. They started listening to me on television, talking about how the the the, the wow of the vow. How that Psalms 50, verses 14 and 15, how that we could enter into a covenant with God. That that vow of faith gave that woman an advantage for success. She went into, she covenanted with God. She made a promise. She made a thousand dollar vow of faith and had no money. He got all upset. He was mad at her. He wasn't, was not born again, was not serving the Lord. But he began to listen to me on television. And he said, I think we should prove, I think we should test it are to prove the word. And the Lord said, prove me with your tithes and offerings, which is fulfilling a vow of faith, your tithes and offerings, and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and rebuke the devil. Well, God began to move in their life. They began to pay $5, $10. She didn't have $1,000, but she vowed, I don't know, 500 or 100 or something. And she vowed to God that she would pay that as he would give seed. Now, now the, the, the spectacular part is that people can make a pledge, vow, covenant with God. And that gives you an advantage for success. Okay? It moves you into a different category. You're worshiping God. You're, you're not looking at the things that are seen as your source. You're looking to God as your source. And that is a game changer. You're looking, sister, you're looking to God as your source. Brother, you're looking to God as your source. He is rich. Paul had the revelation after they had, after some disciples had sent some money to him in, there in Jerusalem. He said, but my God will supply all of your need. My God will supply your need according to his riches in glory through Jesus Christ. He knew that there were riches in glory and our acts of faith releases the healing, releases supernatural abundant supply. See, we're learning how we're we're learning how to live the abundant life in Christ. We're living living the life. Everybody say with me, living the life. Say, how are you doing? I'm living the life. Oh, what, well, what life are you living? I'm living the abundance of Christ. I'm living the life of Christ's abundance. I'm living the life of Christ's abundance. Say it with me. I'm living the life. Say it again. I'm living, everybody, everybody all over the auditorium, thousands of people, by faith. I'm living the life. Bob, how you doing? I'm living the life. The life, T-H-E-E. -E. Bob, how you doing? I'm living the life. Someone asks you, brother, sister, how, how are you doing? You say, I'm living the life. Well, what life are you living? Are you living your natural life? Are you living Christ's abundance life? Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That you might have life and have it more abundantly. The abundance of Christ. The abundance of peace. The abundance of joy. The abundance of health. Yes, and the abundance of biblical, scriptural, divine prosperity. But my God will supply all your need. These people that I've watched their testimonials and listened to them, after all these years, it's simply a matter of someone preaching faith to you. How can they hear without a preacher? How can they have faith to receive miracles without someone preaching faith? I'm a faith preacher. I told uh, Maria today, I said, you know what I do, what we do? I said, we just simply, we teach and preach 
biblical, scriptural faith. And faith, when believed the word of God, will give substance to things only hoped for. Faith moves hope out of someday into today, right now. Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is the substance, the substance of things. Now, today, you have it. You believe that you received it. That little woman with the issue of blood, she believed that she would receive when she touched the hem of his garment. She made her appointment with the Lord. She wrote her own ticket with God. She wrote it, her mouth was a, Psalms 45, one, her mouth was a pen of a ready writer. And she believed that she, she believed that she received when she touched his garment. Power went out. Jesus didn't even know who it was. He just perceived that power had been released from him. Dunamis, supernatural power, unlimited ability of God. These people, entered into a covenant with God, the vow of faith. They made a vow, a promise to God, as God gave them seed to sow. Like that brother that I, that I talked to last week, Brother Emmanuel. Brother Emmanuel came here from Nigeria. He had gotten his degree as a doctor there, but he was very young, but he had to go back through it here, and he came here with no money. And uh, his uh, brother came to see him a few days later there at, at, uh, where he was staying at a home and gave him $20. And he said, well, there's my seed. And he planted that seed and that God began to give him bread to eat and multiply his seed sown. See, God will give you seed. If you will make the vow, you need to make a new one and begin to pay it as God gives you seed to sow, that seed sown will begin to multiply. He'll give you seed to sow, bread to eat, and will multiply your seed sown. I watched these testimonials, one right after the next, of people who were facing big problems in their life, but they covenanted with God. They made a vow of faith, a vow in faith, that they would pay it as God gave them seed to sow. And you know what happened? God gave them seed to sow. They didn't look to themselves as the source. See, that turns God into the source instead of yourself as the source. Now, we have to have faith with works. We have to, the Lord worked with them, confirming the word with signs following. We're co-creators with God. Let's roll that tape, Amanda. Let's roll that video of that dear sister whose house had burned down. She didn't know what she was going to do. And, uh, but she listened to me preach on the power of entering into a covenant with God. She got herself an advantage for success in life through that vow. So many people love to make a vow of faith to God. And by the way, we send you all kinds of literature. Why? Because I'm a faith teacher. I'm a master faith teacher. My job is to build, to help you release your faith. My job is to put my hands on top of your hands and help you shoot your arrow of salvation, your arrow of prayers answered. My job is to feed you the word of God and begin to send you books and tapes and CDs, our course, our big course, our 21 day change your life course. Let's watch this message right here with our dear sister as she learned to, she, she learned how to shoot her arrow by entering into a covenant with God. Watch this. Cynthia felt life had caved in on her, especially after a fire had gutted her home. And I was down in the basement and I looked up and I realized I had one dress, a bucket and a roll of toilet paper. I didn't even have a roof over my head. Cynthia also didn't have a husband. He had run off with another woman, and she didn't have a job or a car. What Cynthia did have was a huge debt, courtesy of her ex-husband. All together, I was probably in about fifty-five dollars to $60,000 over my head. 
Fortunately, Cynthia found the Lord and became a Christian and eventually a minister, and some things began to improve, but the bills continued to swamp her. They were knocking on the door, they were calling a part-time job, they were leaving notes, they were threatening that they were gonna come and just take stuff out my home. Financial desperation took its toll on Cynthia's Christian convictions. I was really, really, really desperate that uh, one time someone had left uh, $2,000. I picked it up, I put it in my purse, but then I went back and gave it to him. I really felt like a fool to find out how easy it was to get out of a situation. I had done everything the right way, but there was something I had never done. If you want God to change things in your life, you must make a vow to God. And then he said, there's a woman sitting out there, and she's in a lot of debt. She feels like she's alone. He said, uh, her family's broke up. He said she needs a job. He said she needs a car. And he said she feels like she's nobody. And he said all she has to do is make a vow to God and he said, it'll change her whole life. All of a sudden, I sent the vow, and about two weeks later, things start changing in my life. Utilities were restored. Her credit rating was cleared up. She lost a phenomenal amount of weight. She received physical healings, and God totally restored her house. God can do it. He can restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, but you have to remember God. It can't just tide, you must vow to the Lord and keep it. Cynthia has received a $10,000 raise and found just the car she desired at an amazingly low price. She claims again because of vowing. God loves his children. And I can tell every man and every woman, it's not about your color, it's not about being a preacher. It's about knowing God and making a vow. For God is a spirit, and he goes nationwide, anywhere, to get you money. And that's your bank, and you can bank on Jesus. Amen. A powerful testimonial. I just simply taught the word of faith to her. I explained to her the power of entering into a covenant, a vow unto the Lord, to worship him through your giving, and basically making him the source of your supply, while we look not at the things that are seen as our source. But we, through that vow of faith, that covenant with God, that advantage for success, we're looking to God and his unlimited resources as our source. We're moving out of, <laughs> here we go, we're moving out of our bank account into God's bank account. God begins to give you favor. See how God began to give her favor? See, she hooked up with the Lord. And the good shepherd, ha <laughs> the good shepherd who causes our cup to overflow, anoints our head with oil, who gives us favor. Listen to this powerful scripture. Here in Psalm 75, for promotion comes not from the east or the west, but promotion comes from God above. God puts up down one and he puts up another. This is a word for someone right here for a promotion. Someone wanting a promotion on your job or your business. God wants to promote you and bring you before great people. God wants to promote you. Your vow that you need to make today is for a promotion. Not just promotion on the job, not just promotion of money, but I mean God to be your whole oh, business person. God's going to be your promoter. That's a word for someone. You need to make a vow of faith today through our ministry. You can call that number on the screen. Say, I want to make my vow of faith and just give me the amount that you want to make it for. And then as God, I'll send you an envelope, as God gives you seed to sow. Also, someone you can go online today and you need to pay on your vow today. It's a powerful thing about being a doer of the word and not a hear only. So many people are confusing, say, well, I believe the word of God. You're believing it, you're mentally assenting to it, but you're not applying it in your life. You say, oh, I believe that, but you don't do it. And that's, that's what's limited you. You just need someone like me 
to teach you how to enter into a covenant with God, how to make a vow unto the Lord and begin to worship him who ought to be feared. And listen to this in Psalm 76, 11. Vow and pay. This is Bible. Vow and pay unto the Lord your God. Let all that be round about him bring presents unto him that ought to be feared. Oh, in other words, don't fear your problems. Have reverential respect toward God while we're looking not to him, not to things as, as our source. You're changing and you're going from head faith to Bible heart faith. You're moving out of the natural realm. You're moving into the spiritual realm of God. That's why he said without faith, you cannot please God. Why? He wants to answer your prayer, sister. So you're learning how to get out of your head and you're learning how to get live out of your heart. When Peter stepped out of that boat, he heard the Lord speak come. He stepped out of where he was into the unlimited abundant life in Christ. Glory to God. How you doing, Bob? I'm living the life. How are you doing, sister? Say it. I'm living the life of Christ's abundance. I'm living the life of Christ's abundance. I'm learning how to live out of his riches in glory. I'm learning how to draw out of my joint, <laughs> a joint account, heirs of God, joint heirs with you. We have a joint heavenly account. I'm drawing out of my heavenly account. I'm operating in prayer. I'm praying and, and drawing out of my account in Jesus' name, our family name, the name above every name. I'm learning how to live out of his riches in glory. Every one of these people, I watched these yesterday and today, these testimonials were just ordinary people who learned to step out of limited life, limited faith, into the unlimited life, unlimited faith in, in Christ. Why? Because Christ lives in you and you have Bible faith in your heart. You're learning how to live out of Christ's faith. I'm going to pray in a moment for those of you that are making a vow of faith today and those of you that are paying on your vow of faith today. God said if we would prove him, prove, he says, prove me now herewith your tithes and offerings and see if I'll not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There's not room enough to receive it. Someone watching me right now, you've been thinking about paying on your pledge today, the last few days, you need to do that today. Someone, have, you've really been blessed through our ministry over the years, you need to help us today. If, we're, if, if you've been feeding off of our ministry and the anointing of Christ in us, it would only seem appropriate to help us in the ministry. I said to help us in the ministry. We depend on you. God commands certain people to sustain our ministry. When God spoke to me years ago through the through 1 Kings 17, he said, Bob, I'm not going to send to those. I'm not sending you to your answer to prayers for your needs to be met is not going to come from those who have it, but is going to come from those who are willing to give out of their need. I'm going to send you to people who have needs in their life and every area of their life to preach faith. And then God gave me the anointing to preach a powerful message of faith, hope, and love. Someone needs to go online right now and help us in the ministry. It's going to release what's been held back in your life. God will rebuke that devil out of your life. And it goes on to say, vow and pay unto the Lord your God. But all to be round about him bring presents unto him that ought to be feared, and he shall cut off the spirit of the princes. He is terrible to the kings of the earth. In other words, God will break that principalities and powers that's been holding back your answers to prayer. That's how powerful the vow of faith is. That's how powerful it is to worship God as your source. Satan hates for you to worship God through your tithes and offerings. He knows every time you do, God rebukes him and makes him let go of what he's been holding back from you, sister. God rebukes him, my brother, business person. God rebukes him and makes him let go of it. You see, how do you know that, Bob? Because I, 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 I know. I know that I know that I know that every time you worship God, every time I worship God, I'm a tither, I give offerings. And I know that God is opening the windows of heaven unto me. God is pouring out blessings unto me. God's rebuking the devils off of my, my harvest. I'm, I know the power of worshiping God. Jacob vowed to tithe. And when he did, God caused his flocks to begin to multiply. And the divine transfer of wealth 
began to go into Jacob's life and he became Israel to rule as God's regent king in the earth. Now, when you vow and pay, we're going to be sending you some powerful literature. We're going to be sending you more information on how you can stake your claim to God's master plan for your life. We've got all kinds of things. You'll have your own QR code, your own tracks to pass out with your code, your code and ID number on the back. Everyone that responds to the free book and the free offer and begins to become a part of our systems and the things that we're doing, you will get credit for that. You'll get rewards and you will also get ministerial compensation. We've got big things going on here at Success in Life, Robert Tilton Ministries and Word of Faith Worldwide church. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, glory to God. For I'm directing your steps, saith the Lord. Even from the beginning of time, I started your steps and I've never failed you. You are my child, saith God. Uh, my hand is upon you to direct you. I am your good shepherd. So continue to be faithful. Continue to keep your eyes upon me, for I am directing your steps this day, saith the Lord. Glory to God. I will give you seed to sow, and I will give you bread to eat. And that seed that you sow, I will multiply, saith the Lord and increase the fruits of thy righteousness. For I'm teaching you how to be self-sufficient in me. I'm teaching you how to be self-sufficient in my, my riches and glory. I'm teaching you how to reign in life. Oh yes, that's just this. The Lord is teaching you how to exercise your dominion in life through learning how to use his faith, his name, and to draw out of your joint heavenly account in Jesus name. And oh God, let healing flow through my hands. Let healing flow through my hands. Even now, let healing flow through my hands. Let your power be released. Let your power be released. God, you said that if we would bow and pay that you would hear our prayers in the day of trouble and you would re you would deliver us. Father, you see that one and it's having problems in that one that making a thousand dollar vow in their marriage. God, I believe you're going to restore that home and make a way, oh yes, where there seems to be no way. That was the word for someone. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. It's wonderful that Jesus is our shepherd, isn't it? The Lord, David, King David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. How are you doing, sister? How are you doing, brother? I'm living the life. Say it. I'm living the life. Say it. I'm living the life today. My faith says I have it now. Now faith is the substance. I have it. I have it. And my acts of faith is causing, my faith is giving reality to things only hoped for. I'm getting out of just mental ascending to the promises of God. I'm getting into real Bible living the life of Christ, the life of biblical God kind of faith. Amen. Well, we've got a bunch of things to be sending you. You can get your free book. If you'd like to go to that little QR code on the side there, you can immediately have my book charting your course by the dream in your heart. And the other one, how to be rich and have everything you ever wanted. Seven powerful scriptures to help you chart your course by the dream in your heart. See, I've got to get you delivered from limited thinking and get you moving into the unlimited life, the life of abundance in Christ. Got to go. Robert Tilton, reaching out to you. Welcome to Success in Life with Robert Tilton. Thank you for watching the new Success in Life broadcast. Now like the four lepers, don't sit there till you die. Get up and get going into the big life that God has for you. You are co-creators with God. Seize the moment. Go online to our website, successinlife.club. For your free book, How to Be Rich and Have Everything You Ever Wanted, and the introductory lesson on how to build and live your dream life today. Join and enroll in the new Success in Life Club. Rise up and walk into the big life that God has for you. 
Start living your dream life today. Make your thanksgiving vow of faith. Whatever the amount the Lord is putting on your heart as a sacrificial offering unto Him, whether it's $100, $500, $1,000, or whatever the amount, as you purposeth in your heart that takes faith, God will begin giving you seed to sow and shine His divine favor upon your path. When you vow, you are accepting Daniel's 21-day power of agreement miracle challenge and beginning your free trial Success in Life Club membership with all of its benefits. I will also be mailing you your free blessed prayer cloth and miracle anointing oil that I have personally blessed and fervently prayed over. Stake your claim to your divine inheritance. Like Jacob, you're vowing your vow to go into business with God for debt-free living and learning how to pay your bills supernaturally. As you vow and pay, you will also receive this time to build and live your dream life prosperity course from our Ulta Versity. Call me right now and say what you want God to do for you. You are not buying miracles. You are worshiping God and making tremendous power available through your actions of faith. Begin sowing your seeds as God provides, all at once, weekly, monthly, or over a year. Jacob bowed to tithe and became Israel to rule as God's regent king in the earth and became one of God's millionaires in the making. Are you next?